Good morning, everybody. Today is filming day. I wish every day could be filming day, but uh, you know, I work a full time job. I've got two young chiddlers. Uh, just a lot going on all the time. Maybe someday I'll be able to make this a full time gig, but for now, I basically only get to film on the weekends. So today is an exciting day. Uh, it was supposed to be raining all weekend, and as a matter of fact, uh, it just finished raining, and I'm headed out to the beehives. If I've uh, learned anything from my past, it's that the bees get a little more agitated when there's moisture in the sky. So my chances of getting stung today are a little bit elevated. So this should be exciting. I've been keeping a close eye on the progress of the bottom two brood boxes. I'd say... Let's see, the last time I was in my observation window hive, I'd say we were easily at the 80% mark of, of everything being filled out with brood and honey. Everything's in full swing, so the second hive, the second green acre hive is a little bit behind. So what I, what I plan on doing today is taking this here super box with a bunch of super flame, frames and a queen excluder removing the syrup, starting to put the super on. So the super, this is what they'll actually start storing the honey away in. How that works is there's a queen excluder right here. This queen excluder is just large enough to allow worker bees to get up into the super box and just small enough to prevent the queen from getting up into the super and laying eggs. Basically that results in a box of frames completely filled with honey and that is what the beekeeper will harvest the honey from so you don't have to worry about having any brood any larva or anything mixed in with your honey because that would be gross all right I got my smoker going. I'm actually using pine shavings uh, that I collect from my neighbor's uh, fallen pine needles. It smells fantastic, unlike the, the cotton that I was burning. That just doesn't smell very good. This stuff smells great, produces a great plume of smoke here, burns quite a while, and it's free. Can't go wrong. Holy cow! They are going nuts on the side. I gotta give you guys a close up of this. Man, this is awesome. This is what I wanted with the observation window. Look at that, you can see what they're doing without getting in there and disturbing them. This whole section from here over is all built out comb. Look at that. That is beautiful. This section here is still uh, unfinished. They're still building that comb out, or have to build the comb out, I should say. Look at that smoke. I'm gonna grab a Snapchat of this quick. That is neat. That is so cool. I, I wanted to add these observation windows to our hives. I'll, I'll put the link to the video of me making the windows in the upper corner of the screen. Um, but I wanted to add these so, like my kids for instance, can come out here and open this up and see what the bees are doing inside the hive without disturbing them. It's really neat. <clears throat> bees are so fascinating, the, the, all the different jobs they have in there. Um, just to get to kind of see the life cycle of a bee through the window into the hive without any disruption or worry of being uh, stung or anything like that is, is really neat. So this is cool to see. Yeah, I don't see any, any eggs or any larvae or anything in any of those cells that they started building out yet. They're actually completely empty. So um, the queen probably hasn't started coming up into this uh, particular frame yet. The worker bees are still building it out. So what I'm gonna do is remove this uh, syrup box on top. When you add your super to the hives, you don't want to be feeding them syrup anymore because they'll take that syrup as a direct substitute for honey and put it right into the cells. And then when you go to harvest it, you're harvesting syrup water and you're not actually getting honey. <coughs> Holy smokes. <clears throat> so, 
let's get this box off here. Um, I'll actually see if I can empty this syrup into this box because this, this colony is a little bit further behind. Um, it'll probably be another week or two until I add the first super to this colony. Um, so let's get this guy off. Probably should smoke him out a little bit again. <clears throat> yeah, this colony's been going to town. This, this one's almost empty. There's, it's dried up quite a bit in here. Still a little bit left in here, so I'm going to see if I can transfer it over to this colony and hopefully not get attacked. Beautiful! Set this to the side. Get some more, some more smoke down in this hole here. Pop off our inner cover. So far so good, they're not too agitated. Haven't been stung yet. Fingers crossed. Don't see the queen on the inner cover. I gotta get a shot of this. You can see their propolis around the edge here where they sealed it off. Whoop. That one just nudged me like, hey, don't move so quickly, you're freaking us out. This band right here is propolis. That's bee glue. As I talked about in a previous video, they will glue any openings in their hive shut. That keeps out bacteria, invaders, any contaminants, you know, it just it makes a sterile environment inside of the hive for the bees. Looking down inside the hive here, this is the top of the second brood box. You can see if they move out of the way that they've got, they've built out a ton of comb in here and that's all capped honey right there actually. Yeah, all of these are looking fantastic. We know that they're already filling out this frame here because we can see it from the observation window, which means this box is pretty much full, so it is time to expand upwards. I've been doing so much talking that I've just been letting my pine needles burn out here. I might have to go get some more fuel. All right. Oh, oh, relax, 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 relax. <laughs> yeah, they're a little more agitated today with the humidity. What I want to do is I want to get this pollen patty out of here too. Uh, one of my previous videos, I noticed some hive beetle larva and uh, pollen patty so I am removing these they don't need pollen patty substitutes right now anyway there's enough forage out there for them to to bring in this is just a pollen substitute it's not even real pollen um, so we're gonna get rid of this oh, oh okay okay take it easy it's okay feel like I'm dancing with the devil a little bit here my mom is pretty allergic to bees she got attacked pretty good when she was younger and um, yeah she just doesn't do well with bee stings so I've been stung a few times now yeah they keep nudging me they'll warn you by uh, buzzing your face buzzing your head and they'll bump right into you like that and that's just a warning like hey keep your distance we don't like what you're doing anytime I put my hand down near them they do that um, but anyway yeah my mom's pretty allergic so I never knew if I was. I've been stung a handful of times now. And actually my reactions do seem to be getting a little worse each time I get stung. But that could be because, like the last time I was stung, I was stung right above the eye. My whole eye, half my face uh, swelled up. That's normal. This is a very sensitive part of our body to get stung on, so. But either way, I wanna try to avoid getting stung as much as possible. So this is our queen excluder. As I mentioned, this keeps the queen from going up into the super, so she won't lay any lay any eggs up there. But the female worker bees that bring in all the nectar and the pollen and everything, they'll be able to get up into the super still and, and make honey up there for us. All right, now we can throw our super on. So the only real difference between the supers and the brood boxes is their size. These are, I believe, well, what is it, like six and a quarter, six and a half inch uh, frames. Slightly smaller. The reason being, you can certainly use uh, these taller 10, 10 and a half, whatever they are, uh, brood boxes for honey supers. It's just they get extremely heavy. Honey is very heavy, it's dense. Uh, and when you've got a whole box full and you have to come out here to harvest and you have to lift that thing off, 
it can get very heavy. So just having a smaller frame like this obviously cuts your weight in half. Uh, that's the real reason for, for having smaller frames for supers. So push all your frames to the center. Let's get our um, inner cover back on here. Yeah, this is really exciting. I mean, we have the bees out here for a handful of reasons. Obviously they help pollinate everything in our gardens, um, pollinate our neighbors' gardens and flowers. They're great for the environment. But the honey, man, the honey is where it's at. So this is exciting. This is our first step in, in getting our own honey out of this colony. All right, and that's that. So cool. All right, so this is our second colony here. Looks like we got a bee stuck in the syrup. I'm gonna get this guy out. Another one here. These probably fell in there when I was transferring the syrup over from the observation colony. Okay, so while we're here, I'm gonna crack this open, take a look inside. My smoke is gone, and I don't feel like going back to refill it, so... Man, I am really testing my luck here with these bees. Let's hope I don't get stung. All right. Popping the inner cover off. Ooh, baby. They basically ate through the entire pollen patty that I just put on this one. All right, take that back. I didn't put a pollen, I put a pollen patty on that one. This one's about a couple weeks old now, so again, I am not going to provide them with any more pollen patties. Um, looks like this one has about three frames left to fill out, a little bit further behind than the uh, prior colony. Healthy nonetheless, just a little bit slower. Every colony is a little different. I should pop one of these out, see if we've got brood up in here. I'm going to push my luck for you guys. I'm not going to go get more fuel, I'm just going to... I'm just going to get in here, pop one of these out. Ooh, one of them's doing the waggle dance. Let's see if I can get this on video for you. See that? That bee there uh, was just wiggling her butt like that. What that is, is a form of communication. She's, she just came back likely from somewhere else and she is spreading information within the colony. Uh, she'll come back and, and wiggle a certain way and that tells the bees like hey there's food or forage or water in this location and then the other bees will start wiggling and transfer that information throughout the entire colony really fascinating all right let's uh let's pop out the center one here because that's going to have the most uh going on with it Woo! I don't know guys, I should probably go get more fuel for my smoker. Let me try that one more time. Oh yeah, oh baby, that is healthy. Ton of uh, larva and capped brood in there. We got honey on the top. Man, that looks great. Yeah, this colony's looking good. I'm gonna put it back in here and stop testing my luck. Get this inner cover back on. I'll continue giving them syrup to help them finish building out the second brood box. But then once we're ready for supers, we'll pull this one too. So we don't get any sugar water mixed in with our honey. That was incredibly successful. Everybody's looking really good. I didn't get stung. We got our super on, the observation hive. The observation window is being functional. They're actually building that out. That is really cool to see. So awesome. I gotta get Emmy out here eventually to show her that. I'm just moving all my stuff out of the apiary now that I'm done. But there are still a lot of bees on that um, syrup feeder that I pulled off the first colony. 
So I'm just going to let that sit out here for a little while and let the bees kind of make their way out of it and uh, get back into the colony, into the hive. And when they're all out of here, then I'll, then I'll come back and clean this up. I've said it before, but every time I come out by these wildflowers, they look completely different. Almost every day there's a new flower popping up. And uh, early spring we went from purple to white to blue, pinks, and now we're in full yellow. This is probably one of the coolest things I've done on our property. I'll put the link to the, pro to the mix that I got from Eden Brothers in the description below. Check it out. Uh, it's an affiliate link, so if you purchase it, the Green Acre will get a little bit of a kickback on it, so much appreciated. Everybody should do this, though. These are uh, perennial. It's an all-perennial wildflower mix. A lot of these are native to this region. Um, they do have a specific native mix, too, on their website. Just go ahead and surf around, check it out, see what they got. Uh, but these flowers are going to be here. They'll come back year after year. They'll get stronger every year. Um, they look beautiful. They're awesome for the pollinators, the butterflies. Everybody should have this in their yard. So I mentioned in a previous video that I planted a trumpet vine here on the kids' playset. set. Um, I went and picked up some remesh, which is uh, what you can put in concrete for some, some uh, structural integrity prevents uh, cracking and splitting of the concrete. Anyway, it's relatively affordable. It was like eight bucks for a four by eight sheet, or a, I don't know if you can call it a sheet, a panel, whatever, a grid of remesh. So I'm gonna put that remesh right up this wall that you guys are sitting on right now. And this trumpet vine will be able to grow up that remesh. It'll grab on with its tendrils. Uh, this trumpet vine can grow up to like 30 feet long. So it's gonna grow up the remesh and then I'm gonna kind of train it to go up onto the roof above you guys down uh, the bridge here up onto the roof of the other structure um, and then when it blooms it's got these long uh, yellow flowers beautiful flowers uh, the hummingbirds the pollinators they'll all love it butterflies so and it'll look really cool it'll actually it'll provide a little bit of shade too not that we need it we're under a tree right now so it's pretty much shaded all day the kids will stay nice and cool here in the middle of the summer um, so yeah I'm, I'm gonna go grab the remesh and we'll get that secured on here and another project off the list Okay, I just threw the remesh up on the fort to uh, see how it all lays out. I am going to have to cut the edges of this off and one of the sections of panels on the top uh, to get it to fit right. So we'll head over to the garage and get that all cut up. I decided to take this out into the grass so I'm not throwing sparks all over my garage. But I'm just gonna take my Dremel tool and cut off all these endpoints that are sticking out. This side has it, that side has it. And then I'm just gonna cut off one section of uh, the top of the remesh here, because it was a little too long. Safety first. I've got a remesh cut to size. Sorry if it's a bit windy, it looks like there might be another storm rolling in, but hopefully the dead cat on the microphone cuts down on some of those wind gusts for you. I'll try and speak up a bit. So, I'm just going to clamp this on here and then I'm gonna start going through with these uh, poultry net staples. And I'll just put a bunch of those on here to get it to uh, stay up on the wall. Stretch! Oh. All right, it is secure and just look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Just just look at it. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Now, eventually, I do plan on kind of closing in and building a room down here on this lower portion of the tower. So, this will all be on the outside still and will not interfere with what the kids are doing on the inside. But 
I haven't been able to purchase the wood to do that with uh, the prices of building materials right now. It just doesn't make any sense to do that. So I've used remesh uh, a handful of different places on our property for trellising reasons, purposes, and I like it a lot. It is. I know a lot of people use cattle panels to trellis. The cattle panels, they're a bit thicker, more sturdy uh, than the remesh, but honestly this does the job just fine for a fraction of the price. And cattle panels sometimes so many people buy them they can be sold out and stuff the remesh is always in stock and uh, it's served me well for many years I've never had any problems with it so I would recommend looking into remesh for trellising purposes uh, you don't need to purchase expensive cattle panels so that's gonna do it for today's video uh, actually today is the final day to submit your photos for our giveaway uh, I'll be doing a drawing I don't know I'll do it before bed sometime tonight and uh, we'll post a video with who the winner is and I'll be actually putting a video together showing everybody's uh, photos that they submitted too. So look forward to that. Um, yeah, if you want to support the Green Acre at all, we do have merchandise. Check out our spring and our Etsy store, decals, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We have a PO box if you want to send us anything. Always enjoy getting things from our, from our subscribers. Uh, yeah, pretty exciting day. Take care, we'll catch you on the next video.